My name is Jay. I'm currently a graduate research assistant at Purdue Homeland Security Institute located in West Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, today we're going to talk about pretty much our institute's uh, journey in recreating some of our tragic incidents uh, that happened in the past to test the modern day policies that is meant to help us out. Uh, today, so uh, I'm going to begin with an executive summary, and then we're going to go into how we tested the policy by creating a model with any logic, and how any logic is beneficial in recreating historical events by simply having an image and having a log of incident that have occurred uh, uh, by A, B, C, D in that order, and then why our research is important, and we're going to show you several different cases of our model demonstration. And we're going to end with a quick question and answer. So in the beginning of 2010, our institute began to think and hypothesize that the occurrence of active shooter incidents will increase. Um, unfortunately, that has been true, which increased our research interest into this field. In order to conduct various research in a multiple different environment, we were seeking different tools, and one of them was AnyLogic. After our multiple successes in developing active shooter incidents in a modeling environment, we have chosen AnyLogic as our main tool, and we continue to use this amazing software until today. Uh, in the beginning, our models were primarily focused in couple agents in a hypothetical environment that does not exist. We found a limitation, uh, limitation in this research method and decided to come up with a model that replicates some of our active shooter incidents that have occurred in the past so that we can validate it and implement new policies to test the effectiveness of the unarmed individual policies. Uh, during this phase, we were able to come up with several different uh, proof of concept models, which were later implemented into the Columbine model, which I will go over uh, in the later. So this image is currently publicly uh, available online, uh, which was procured by the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office in Colorado. And as a matter of fact, if you all Google AnyLogic Cloud Columbine, you're able to play with this model. You can input your parameter, decide what happens, and you can pretty much uh, play the whole simulation. As soon as we got this uh, image, we wanted to recreate the library of the Columbine High School at that time. So what we did is we began to look into different images that were taken at that time, uh, incident reports, anything that we could get hold of. Uh, once we gathered these information, we began to implement some of the tools that AnyLogic provides in the pedestrian library, uh, such as walls, uh, rectangular walls, um, spaces, all these good things. And then later on, we began to think that, hey, there are obstacles in the library. How can we better implement a line of fire? Now, for those of you who are not familiar with line of fire, uh, let me demonstrate something. So if I'm a police officer, and if there is a wall, and if there is my suspect, I can't shoot through the wall. So in order to implement that, what we did is we pretty much chessboarded the whole library. So little rectangles in a uh, cyan color, those are different areas. Depending on your area, your line of sight is limited. As you can see where the red dot is, that's where the main entrance is. If someone is over there, they, their line of sight does not extend to the bottom half of the library because you're obstacled by a physical barrier. Those kind of proof of concept model that we had prior were, were implemented in this model. So this is, the video should start automatically, I believe, maybe not. Before, let's give it a little second. I'm sure it'll start on its own, I'm confident. So this is a model progression based on a historical event. Every single progression that you see is in the books, it's in the report. What we wanted to learn from this from this event by modeling it was two things. Okay, it just went back, were two things. The first one was the agent's speed, uh, the shooter agent's speed. So there are two shooters and we wanted to average their speed out. Uh, what we were able to find by running multiple experiments, their minimum speed is 2.83 feet per second. We also wanted to learn the, the discharge range, which was 51.12 feet. Once we have figured these uh, components out, then we have used, 
what we have learned from a historical model to learn the discharge scope, which is this example. So as you can see, the shooter is programmed to go after a target that is closest to them in order to cause the casualties that, have, that were occurred historically. Uh, there were 22 casualties that have occurred, uh, as mentioned in the report, and by running the model based on the historical event, we were able to find that the shooter's minimum discharge scope is 14.31 degrees. Uh, once we have figured this out, we were confident that we have completed all the processes to validate the model, and then we have progressed into testing the policy of run height fight. Now, before we move on to demonstrating how we have conducted run high fight, let me go over why uh, we have decided to use AnyLogic to conduct this research. As I have mentioned before, it is crucial for us to have the capacity, us meaning our institute, to have the capacity to recreate something in a virtual environment. As you all may know, Homeland Security incidents are very challenging to recreate. It is going to be very challenging to recreate Katrina. It is going to be very challenging to recreate what had happened in Houston in real life. In order to conduct the simulation in a faster pace in a virtual environment, we have used any logic because it gives us a lot of capacity to do a lot of different things that is very unconventional. And I would like to point out and take this opportunity to thank any logic support. Uh, they have been tremendous help to us. Uh, every single time when one of our lab members is going through a very challenging time, they have been very proactive in assisting um, our technical issues. Uh, another thing that I would like to mention is that AnyLogic agents are highly configurable. So depending on the agent's role, we were able to decide, uh, we were able to implement their role. For example, if you're an unarmed individual, your role in this, uh, in this scenario is to either run, hide, or fight. If your role as an agent is a shooter, your purpose is to seek the nearest target and discharge to cause as much casualty as possible. Currently, we are planning to add the law enforcement component into the column by model. And the law enforcement component is primarily focused in main, maintaining the contact, contact team formation. So think of a diamond formation, and every single officer is pointing their weapon at different direction as they move toward the target. Uh, we have the proof of concept model, and we're currently in progress to implement this. It has, take, it has taken us about two months, but we are hoping that in a week we should be able to add the uh, law enforcement component uh, to a uh, cloud model, which is currently available. The another important thing is the data collection capability. Uh, when we were developing our any logic models in a hypothetical environment, uh, based on an incident that did not occur. Uh, it was one of the biggest challenges that we had. How can we validate our model? How can we tell the school superintendents that, hey, this model is something trustworthy that we have made based on something that does not exist? So by creating something that have occurred in the past and by analyzing the output data to ensure that every single event has occurred and executed, um, these are some of the leverages that we were able to use to make sure that our model um, is solid by analyzing the output data. Um, the importance of our research, as I mentioned before, um, it's virtually impossible to recreate something at this of a magnitude. However, um, since we're doing it in a virtual environment, we have a lot more freedom. Uh, in addition to the Columbine model, we do want to expand our research capacity uh, to other active shooter incidents that have occurred in the past. Our primary objective is to make sure that the current response policies for civilians is uh, fully executable uh, depending on the location of the uh, infrastructure or organization. And we do want to customize each institution's policy based on the population. You cannot execute certain policies in an organization that have children, for example. You cannot execute certain policies in a senior home, for example. In order to customize policies to save as much people as possible, 
that's where the strength of AnyLogic comes in. Highly customizable and um, convenience in data extraction for validation purposes. So I would like to, I would like to move on uh, to some of the test cases that we were able to run. The first model that you're seeing right now is the execution of all run. These are evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Everyone, everyone runs regardless, and we can see that we have accumulated 21 casualties in this scenario. If everyone runs at once, everyone, regardless of shooter's proximity to you or to other people, they do not care, they all run. The next scenario that I'm gonna show you is all hide, and this is all hide being executed without any physical shelter. As you can see, as soon as a shooter comes in, all the agents move toward the southeast corner of the library, and despite the shelter-in-place execution, we can see that the number of casualties are accumulating. And um, unfortunately, a lot of cases, uh, shelter-in-place is implemented across the nation without having any measures to defend the individual that is hiding. And our final uh, model is fight. So as soon as the shooter comes in, all individuals, regardless, will approach the shooter and attempt to apprehend the shooter. Uh, I would like to make one correction on the slide. Uh, the casualty says 51, um, and the survived is five. Those are supposed to be switched. So the survived is 51 individuals, and the casualties are 51 individuals. Now, once we have tested all run, all hide, all fight, then we wanted to implement different ideas of run, hide, fight. So what we did is this. As soon as the shooter comes in, everyone runs. And then, if the distance from the civilian to the shooter is 20 feet, then the civilian will attempt to hide. If the proximity between the shooter to civilian is five feet, then the civilian will try to fight the shooter. Uh, we were able to flexibly implement our parameters so that different phases of action could occur in any logic uh, by virtually recreating Columbine. And these are some of the flexibilities that we were able to execute by just simply tweaking a couple of parameters once the model has been validated, which is very important. As you can see, fortunately, we only have nine casualties out of 56 people. Uh, comparing it to the traditional casualty, the turnout is significantly better. And uh, the final uh, demonstration that I would like to disclose is the run, hide, fight execution based on probability. So uh, one third of civilians will run, regardless, uh, one third will fight, and one third will hide. Um, as you can see it in the model, we have different people doing different things. Fortunately, in this scenario, the turnout is really good because we have someone who is defending themselves by being offensive to the shooter. Now, majority of the time when I share this information, a lot of my colleagues and friends will tell me, oh, I will never fight the shooter. I'm like, why would I fight the shooter? You know, I will just hide. But depending on your physical location and how your organization organizes your uh, infrastructure, um, sometimes execution of shelter in place, hide, could be detrimental without having any mechanism to shelter yourself from the firearm discharge. So these are some of the things that we were able to demonstrate by using any logic. And um, without our continuous effort with the support team, uh, while trying to recreate something that had happened a long time ago, uh, would not be possible. And I would like to reemphasize that the, the flexibility to extract data from any logic is, is, is without that capability, um, we would not be able to uh, validate the model. So to summarize all outputs, um, and as I mentioned before, for all fight, the 51 and five is supposed to be switched. Um, these are the outputs of all the videos, demonstrations that I have shown you. And as we can see that uh, the models with some form of offensive mechanism or either all evacuate uh, were able to see a higher number of survival than the model without any offensive mechanism, which was all hide. So by testing different policies in a historical environment, uh, we were able to 
better inform the policymakers that, hey, run, hide, fight works. However, in a condition of a Columbine library that happened 20 years ago. Now, another avenue that we can better deploy or better implement run, hide, fight is that it is pretty much recreation of eight to five of a school. And this is a project or an initiative that we're currently considering. So we would like to partner up with the school to pretty much recreate their eight to five in a modeling environment. And then we would like to find their weakest point. Once we discover this, what we, we would like to do is collaborate with the local police agency so that we can have a closer law enforcement presence. Uh, it appears a majority of you all are from a major city, but in rural areas, the response time is way far behind. So in order to better mitigate such incident, these are some of the initiatives that we want to take it to public by coordinating with uh, the school, by coordinating with the school superintendents as well as uh, the law enforcement agencies. And before I conclude, uh, there are a couple other research in initiatives that we are currently taking in place. Uh, the first one is drone security. Uh, it has came to our attention about three years that the drone issues are kind of gone out of hand. Uh, our primary focus is to protect government infrastructure that requires aerial defense. And um, one of our lab members is currently working in that project. Uh, this project has been going on for about six months. The other project, and this is kind of my own personal project, is assessing the impact of communication tool during a air rescue operation. And this primarily focuses into uh, South Korea, which is where I'm from. Uh, there has been some technical difficulties in providing proper radio communication to the medical crew that goes on a uh, medevac helicopter. Uh, we're trying to assess the impact of having a comm device and not having a comm device. Uh, the reason that I'm sharing this information is that not only in, any, in an active shooter field, in other areas of emergencies, we can also uh, deploy AnyLogic. And once you have a core foundation of how AnyLogic works and how it could be implemented to pretty much recreate something that happened in, before to test the policy, I can't really think of any other tool that would top AnyLogic. Uh, thank you so much, and I will open the floor for questions. Uh, hi, again, that's a wonderful presentation. Uh, I do have a question for you. You have assumed some percentage for uh, maybe run, fight, and hide. Uh, but what I would suggest, like, have you done any discrete choice modeling or a utility maximization model to understand what exactly people would like to do when such situation happens? Uh, I had done something similar where I, where I had surveyed, like a revealed preference survey, mm -hmm. and put that in a discrete choice model, maybe a logit or a puppet model, to understand those percentages instead of assuming some value. So Does it was, make sense? So was the question, uh, just, just to get your question correctly, is it, have we ever decide, considered to right. model something to predict what people would actually do right. if such incident happens? Uh -huh. So the implementation of Run High Five was mentioned, I would say, three conferences ago by, my, by our colleague. And um, he promised that we would deliver Run High Five, and we're doing that today. Um, in that area, um, uh, there's definitely no discussions about it because our primary focus is can we deliver run, hide, fight based on a historical event? But I would say that's another research topic that we would definitely dig into. However, uh, when it comes to such execution, um, our institute's primary focus is um, how can we better implement run, hide, fight, which is pretty much nationwide. If you Google run, hide, fight, and I'm sure if you Google or search Ron Night Fight on your company's webpage, it'll show up. I'm sure you guys went it over. I hope so, right? All your companies do emergency training. I hope they go over Ron Night Fight. Our primary focus right now is um, how can we better customize Ron Night Fight so that we can maximize uh, the impact by lowering the number of casualties. But that's definitely something that we can look into. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So. Um, hello, uh, very interesting presentation, uh, very nice simulation results. Uh, I would like to ask, like, I, I, this is like for a specific case in which you had like access to all the data, but did you have the chance like to test this model like with, and switch the parameters in other cases? Like, 
in other cases? So are you talking about other active shooter events? Yes. Uh, not yet. So um, Columbine was the first one that we wanted to tackle. And um, a couple of our lab mates were related to Columbine, so we wanted to get that done. And it is somewhat of a significant um, incident for our institute as well. So we want to tackle that first. Um, the next active shooter incident that we want to tackle is pretty much anything that happened afterwards. Uh, the primary incident that we're currently looking at is Virginia Tech. Uh, we're currently in the data gathering phase, and we'll be deploying a very similar logic that we have used for the Columbine um, model, which I have demonstrated today. The good thing, and the good thing with any logic is that you can reuse some of the logics that you have used before. Um, the primary time that will be spent for the Virginia Tech model, if it becomes public, will be the implementation of it. But definitely other active shooter incidents, yes, we have considered it. Thank you. M yep. Make sure you share those results when you get them. <laughs> Are you from Virginia Tech? No, no, no. Georgia, okay, okay, Georgia Tech, but uh, oh, that's re re really interesting uh, research topic. Yes. Um, if, you, if you all go to um, any Logic Cloud, Purdue Homeland Security Institute, we have an account. So any update, we'll, we'll be, we'll, we're willing to share it on a cloud so that more people could become familiar with the policy and the work that we're doing. Thank you. I think we're good. Yep. Thank you.